the Lord put you here in my patch. You see, all around you is just is just weeds and disgusting dirt and filth. But in the middle of all this patch, he put you here. It's a little strawberry. A little strawberry, because he knew, he knew, he knew how That's much. That's right, Pastor. <laughs> he knew Bless how him. much you would tempt me. He knew. <laughs> and I'm going to oh, show temptation, him. temptation, Pastor. I'm going to show him. I will not give in. I will not give in. I could kiss sweet, you on the lips relax. right now. I could kiss you on the lips right now. <laughs> I want to kiss you finger. on the lips right now. <laughs> keeps keeps hitting his lips. I could kiss you on the lips right now. I want to kiss you on the lips right now. But <laughs> nope, I'm not going to. I don't think I'm going to. I don't think I'm going to do it. He puts oh, his finger wait, hold on, around. Pastor. He puts his finger on his lips and kisses his finger. <laughs> yeah, I could. <laughs> Bingo. My name is Stretch. This is the last time you mess with Stretch. And fade. Uh, I don't know. Why wouldn't Gamer Subs want to sponsor this, right? It's <laughs> a good question, man. <clears throat> it's good what's, stuff. What's, I, I'm not even. I'm. I, I what's on the cup? Stuff. What's on the cup? What's? On I love cup? it. This one, her name's Sarah. I named her that. And she's got, I'm showing out and I'll show you here now. It's a girl with big titties. Mm. Like that? Yeah. Does that get you hard? Not quite. You ever been Wait, hard while recording a podcast? Mm, no. Have you? Oh, definitely. That's good to know. <laughs> definitely, definitely. How about right now? No. Well, I hope soon. I mean, look how cute she is, huh? How low That's can I Jessica. drop my voice to maybe... Wake the yeah, wake exactly. up the hog. Wake yeah, exactly. up the old chub. Oh my god, Noel's voice just gets when I'm hard and when Noel speaks, my I got that nice I get that nice uh, throbbing vein in my cock where it beats like almost just as hard as my fucking heart's beating. Yeah, it's taking all it's taking everything from you. Wait, dude, I just had the funniest shit happen. So Alina was heading out to go to some appointment right now. And she's like, okay, I'm leaving. And I, I don't know why I just thought to talk to her in like a voice. So from my office, I go, wait, wait. And I thought I was just being funny. And I come out in the hallway and her face is just sheer terror. She's like, I thought you were choking or some shit. Well, yeah. What the fuck are you trying? What, what, what kind of voice even is that? It's like an, no, old, I, it's like an old man. I, wait. Yeah. <laughs> I think I was thinking old man, but, but she didn't. Just, you, you know what's interesting to know? She didn't. She didn't run to your to your help, did she? She just no, stood she, there. I I like I I was in the doorway already, so I stepped out and like uh, caught her the beginnings of her brain like clicking together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, is something happening? Were you all stiffed up, or were you just like, wait? And you're just normal. Yeah, I was normal. I was just like, I was just walking out the doorway, just going, wait. Yeah, wait. I thought you're. I thought you were saying that it was. Uh, she saw, she saw that bank account only have one name on it. You know what I mean? Like, oh, it's now. She's like, no, no, another room. No, you okay, <laughs> oh. you okay, sweetie? <laughs> oh, wait, help, help, help! And she just kind of sits down and she puts her hand, her her face in her hands, and she's like, oh my god, I'm yep. not gonna let this happen. She's walking backwards, putting on noise canceling headphones. <laughs> yeah, I can't hear you. La 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 la. Are you saying something? <laughs> yeah, what are you even saying? I gotta go. <laughs> I'm barred. <laughs> she she left the house and she goes, uh, I go, love you. She's like, I love you more than you love me. I don't price I don't play stupid fucking pranks like you do. And she just walked out the house. <laughs> yeah, my 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 wife said that kind of stuff too. I love you more than you love me. And I'm like, you better believe it. <laughs> There ain't no fucking ifs, ands, or buts. Yay, exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Because, you, think, do you, think you know, I, I don't play, don't don't try to do that. If anybody says that to me, I'm like, you're right. Yeah. I don't do, I don't fuck with that. Oh, you don't like the little competition thing? Or like, you don't, like, do you, do you interpret it like when she says that she's trying to get you to, to be like, no, I love you. Yeah. I'm sitting there. I have my tackle box already closed. My fishing pole's already in my truck. I'm like, we ain't, I'm not fishing. Yeah. That's little that little thing you're trying to get me to bite. Nah. Yeah. 
It's done. Ungrateful. Why can't it, why, it can never just be, Dan, it, this is good, isn't it? Never, no one ever says that. You ever <laughs> notice that in a relationship? <laughs> Fuck, this is good, right? It's yeah. either we complain about the relationship or things are good, but you still have to start some shit like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, you, I love you more than you love me. It's like, yep, yep that's exactly right. Yeah. But re- be- remember that. Do you, do you think women love harder than men? This is the Red Pill podcast. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think they do too. Absolutely. I don't I think there there becomes an extent where men they they don't process emotion the same way that women do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, cuz I I think we're just too savage we're, with it. Yeah, we're just, you know, just a little, you know, just a little bit more on the creature side, you know? Oh, I think so. I think there, there's I think men uh they don't process emotion the same way that goes into a rational thing. You know what yeah. I'm talking about? But, but that's the same way. That's the same way physically, too, right? Mm. I think that somewhere along the evolutionary track, men had, they were just like, this is exactly what they need to be. And that's just like, they kind of think with their cock a little bit. They have heart. Yeah. They have yeah, courage. We got a lot of heart. We have a lot of heart. A lot of heart. But a lot of the misguided emotions trickle through. That's why you either get, you know, the silly, goofy guy who's going to stand in a doorway and do, help. Help, right? <laughs> or your Chris Benoit. Those <laughs> are the two delineations. No in between, man. No Absolutely. Between. There's not one guy who's just like, baby, I love you. Also, the guys that do do that kind of shit, no, I love you more. They are the guys that are, uh, they're fucking around. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, they're, they're, um, they might be, uh, stone cold killers in the night as well. That too. They're either, they're either just like, no, I love you more. And they're fucking piping down some other chick on their lunch break, right? Yeah. Meet me in the back of the Chipotle. Has like yeah. half a eaten fucking bowl. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. You never know. You never know. Or exactly. Or they're just like, no, I love you more. And on their break, they're like going out to the garden, raking some leaves, whatever. There's a fucking like hand coming out of the deal. He looks around, <gasps> kicks fucking dirt over it because he's been killing women for like seven years. <laughs> I started doing it in college. I just couldn't stop. <laughs> Did you ever follow the that Idaho killer on TikTok? <laughs> what? You, like a serious? You missed that? No, you missed I, that I, whole I, I have no idea. Yeah, I have no idea what that is. Oh, this dude, he was this like crazy vegan guy, and typical. He, yeah, I know, right? And you know, what? I guess I, I want to just stop you real quick, Noel, because I have to. That, this is a quick pivot, and we'll get back to it. No, it's fine. Go ahead. I am not a person to judge people on their their bodies. However. However, you notice how a lot of vegan men have the exact same body as like E.T., where it's like really long, gaunt arms. Yeah. Kind of like a big fat ass and tiny legs and a big pot belly. Yep. Yep. That's just, I mean, like they're, they look like serial killers. I don't want to, that's not, I don't want to typecast somebody because there's, we have, probably have vegan listeners right now, but I want to say, that if you if I saw a guy walking out of a vegan bakery in the morning, right? Because yeah. I used to I used to live in Bushwick, Brooklyn. There was a delicious vegan bakery, but all the vegans guys looked exactly the same. Yeah, they wore corduroy pants. Yep, and they have scarves on in the summer. And they're walking around. They have these big fucking gangly, look like little necromancers or something like that, walking around Bushwick, Brooklyn. That's what it looks like, dude. It looks like the dark arts down there in Brooklyn. Yeah, walking around. And they look like serial killers. Sorry, I, I don't know where I think I that. Go ahead, Idaho. Sorry. No, I, I know I know what you mean. I've worked with this type of vegan as well. By the way, the vegan bodybuilding community is about to come for your head, dude. Oh yeah, vegan gains. Is he still alive? What happened to vegan gains? Vegan gains. He must, man. He must be. That, he became a plant. Who, he became a daffodil. You want to talk about um, interesting figures on the internet? Yeah. Well, the, the, it's always interesting that the uh, the like bodybuilding stuff, it's it, it is almost always the start to an unhinged part of internet history, like bodybuild forums back in the day, where the yeah. birthplace of like that's oh, where like bro. the Pepe meme meme came from, and all kinds of shit. It's fucking crazy. Bodybuilding, dude. Bodybuildingforum.net or whatever the fuck. Yeah, whatever yeah. the fuck that was. But the, it, it's it's crazy, though. There's so many, like, my buddy Phileon, I love Phil, 
Filion, mm. and also Danknet. I want to give a shout out to Danknet, which is like one of my favorite documentary style channels. A lot of those guys, they do like fitness like documentary deals about like crazy ass fucking fitness people. And a lot of the time it's not even people, you know, it's like guys who are taking steroids who lie about their lifestyle. You know what I mean? <clears throat> but there's also some guys who are just like, uh, I forget their names, whatever. They're all the fucking same. It's like guys that live in like Boston. And then they're like, yeah, I used to be a green beret. Used to be a green beret psyop. And I've now I'm just like a body. And it's like, they, they interlace this like fake, lore about themselves into like squatting yep. it's very but it starts a huge drama the community kind of thing it's fucking crazy yeah when a creative person or maybe not a creative person but yeah bodybuilding tends to be a step towards some type of insanity i would say i think that it's a creative kind of mind in a way you know what i mean bodybuilding yeah yeah it's like the creative aspect of your mind is like molding yourself into something new. And like you like are thinking of ways to do that. A lot of it is very regiment, but I still think it's like the same kind of creative way that like people think about like aspiring to do things. I think that like there's still that kind of like spark. Maybe creative is the wrong word like you're saying, but there's something there. There's like yeah. an unhinged feeling. Like yeah. a lot of artists I know are all pieces of shit. And I yeah. imagine that a lot of bodybuilders are just pieces of <laughs> shit too. I think it uh, maybe it um maybe it they both are kind of driven by that I need something that's like like I need to be like something bigger than myself kind of thing or like I, I wonder if I it's like to, a constant unfulfillment. Yeah, like that, that's need, that's what I'm going for. Yeah. Yeah, needing to be fulfilled by something but even like the weird like even if you got super jacked it's never enough. You know what yeah. I mean? Same with like uh if you got a like a you did, you know, if I was a big shot director or something like that, right? Yeah. So sold a movie. Yeah. That was my dream. It just, it, I thought it'd be enough. I'd be like, oh, I should have done this. Uh -huh. I, need, I need to sell this many tickets or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. I think that's what I'm coming from with. And I say like something outside of yourself, but yeah, it's yeah. just, yeah, it's that fulfillment. It's like, you want something more from the world. Hey guys, we wanted to take a break to let you know about our sponsor. My bookie MLB is finally back in full swing. And you get that joke because you watch baseball. My bookie wants to be your one-stop shop for all your betting needs. Lock in futures on your favorite club to win the World Series, or take advantage of crazy boosted odds via the My Bookie money bag. My bookie makes it easy for you to sign up and play. You bet, you win, and they pay. Whether you're a diehard or a casual fan, simply put, there's never been a better time to start exploring the world of online sports betting with MyBookie. Sign up today at MyBookie and use promo code STRETCH to secure a first deposit bonus up to $1,000. It's simple. Deposit $200 and play $300 instantly. Just use promo code STRETCH to claim your bonus. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with MyBookie. Um, by the way, what was the original point? The Idaho TikTok killer. Oh yeah, I mean he killed some college kids. <laughs> but, did, but, some... Did, but 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 did he did he uh, did he film TikToks of it? Like was he like a vlog kind of thing? Like no. that one. It's the guy that like lives in New York. He his whole shtick there for a, a while. He just kept singing like New York concrete jungles with streams are made of in like Times Square. You ever seen him? I don't think so. You're gonna have some people. World of Shirts. That's his name. That's his account. World of Shirts. Uh. But he's just like. He looks unhinged. It's kind of like a new Daniel Larson kind of thing, which you know Got Daniel it. Larson yeah, or whatever. But it's like these things are unfolding in real time in these minute-long segments on TikTok or TikTok Lives. Oh, what about what about Buddy who did the um that, like, viral Skyrim clip where he was, you know, uh, he had, like, the... He used that filter to black out his eyes, and... He, do you remember what I'm talking about? No, like, I don't know what you're talking about. It, it, it went super viral. He was just mimicking like an NPC in Skyrim, just like walking into random objects. And yeah, I know that. I didn't know about the the black dot eye thing. Are you talking about the one where it's like the, there's the one guy he's like in the classroom. He like walks in to all the desks or whatever. He might have done it there too. It started like in his home, but that guy murdered his fucking girlfriend. What? The yeah, Skyrim guy did? Wow. Yeah, he's in jail now. He did it crazy too. Like I think um, I think they had a kid, and. They were having relationship problems, and he, uh, she took an iPad with him, or or he like listened 
through and I don't know. Basically, a mobile device gave away that she was with someone else. And he walked up in there and shot her in the head, I think. But was he wrong? Was he, she not hooking up with somebody? Uh, she or was. was she? But they were, they were, they had well, like, you know then, I mean. I think they had split already. Well, you know. Oh, they were already split? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like how I'm trying to justify what's like. Yeah, yeah you motherfucker, they, they ain't no way. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Literally, she was no. unfaithful? Oh, okay. So he's a hero. <laughs> <laughs> he's a vigilante. That's like Batman. He's Batman. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so he's Batman. That is fucking great. You think that if you had a hit, if you were kind of making silly Skyrim videos online, right, you probably tend to probably find a little bit of happiness, right? Probably be able to cool off your jets a bit. Well, you want to talk about unhinged in real time. Yeah. Part of his shtick was doing impersonations. Mm. And he lived in New York, and while living there, I think he ran into, it, it was like the guy that was the inspiration for, I don't think it was Scarface. It's some mob personality. And yeah. he's doing this fucking awkward thing where he's like forcing the guy into a selfie video. And he's like trying to impersonate the characterization of him. And the dude's kind of like, yeah. They made a movie about me. Get the fuck out of my face. And he's like, I'm here with the... It's the craziest yeah, shit. Like, you want to play You want to play rough? Okay, let's play rough. What, <laughs> yeah. Like trying to get his arm around <laughs> yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Was it John Gotti? Was it the Let me look it guy? up, dude. I'll find it. I'll find yeah, it. I mean, if right it was now. the Scarface guy, that makes sense, too. Hold on. <laughs> my Google search is going to be awesome for this guy who killed girlfriend Skyrim. <laughs> you have four million results. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it's Jin Kid. There you go. J I N N Kid. Jin Kid. I got to look this up now, too. I love how, dude, I was about to say if you get anything other than this dude with those <laughs> search terms, there's no way. Oh, did they did they take his account down? Uh, no, it looks like 203,000 subscribers here. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Tony Montana was, and 6 9 worked there you go. a year ago. What yeah, there you go. It's right here on his Instagram. Oh, brother, this... Yeah, meeting Stephen Bauer, Manny Rivera. Yeah, Scarface. Just take a minute. Just take a minute to watch it. Oof. Oh man, you know what? I missed this ending part of the bit. But you see how enamored he is with the feedback from the guy? He is. He's been like, weird. All right, and we're back. Yeah. Yep. Hey, man. I'm just looking at the... I'm just looking at... It's it's crazy to think that it's like... And this is so true. All of these shitty Instagram sketch comedy people... I think a lot of them have probably killed somebody before. <laughs> to look at all this stuff, I'm like... This guy looks far more sane than... Like... I would say uh, 50%, like half of the fucking people that make that kind of shit. Hold up. Did... Did Scarface murder any women in the movie? Was did this guy just go full method? <laughs> he might have. It's method acting, Tony. The uh, man, I'm trying to think about it. What are some like Instagram? Is is that still a thing or is that kind of dead? You know, Instagram talking about like, Insta Instagram comedy or like comedians, Instagram comedians. I, I yeah, I would say that's still a thing. It's definitely a thing. Who was the one guy? There's one guy I remember that translated that. He also had like a pretty big YouTube. Lance something. He would yell at his grandma. Is that still Lance two ten? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you ever hang out with Lance two ten? Since you're a Vine star as well. Oh, hey, nah, man. I don't think I qualified as a Vine star. You didn't. Well, that also. What first off, that wasn't a dig. That was just me asking. Yeah, there's a lot of people on Vine where I'm like, oh, I wonder if he's talked with them, right? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, you shouldn't be so. You shouldn't be so insecure about your time on Vine, dude. You and Cody both fucking look at it, and you're all skeeved out over it. You gotta own that. Yeah, shit. 
Yeah, no, I, I definitely was on there and I definitely began my career there. There's, well, yeah. Yeah, that's where my online career began. Um, but no, I never hung out at Lance 210. I got on Vine right as it was about to shut down. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. When did it shut? Like, what, 2015 or something? Is that what it was? Yeah, it was like, yeah, 20, 2014, 2015. Bye-bye. Yeah, I think it was like junior year of college for me or something. I can't remember. Yeah, You were a junior in college. Wow. I was a junior in college. I know wow. that you're much, much older than I am, so... Uh, no, I thought you were like 43. I am 43. Well, if I'm 43, then you are, you're pushing 50. You know, it's the thing about, you know, is when you're 50, you're going to look the exact same as you look right now. I fucking hope, man. You, you're just going to have some of those creases right here in the corner. <laughs> Them crow feet. The crow feet, whatever, right here yep. on the side. That's that's all it's going to be. Yeah. Also, I, 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 I pictured this the other day. I had a dream that you started smoking like a lot heavy. Not, a, not, not weed or anything, but you were smoking like marble reds. Yeah. I could see it. And I was like, what are you doing? I'm so stressed. You had yellow eyes, like jaundice eyes. I'm just ever stressed. Since killed, ever since I killed all those gay men, I just haven't been able to sleep. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been able to sleep. I've been sleeping so good after I killed all those gay guys. <laughs> we got to get Brian Jordan Alvarez on here to discuss my... My, I'd be my. curious if if it, does it come off the way that I said it would. I forgot that was I forgot that was a, a pinpoint of our conversation last time we talked. <laughs> yeah, <dude. laughs> was uh, was that? Yeah, I forgot about that. I mean, but hey, that's that's why you know I love recording because uh, I just sit back and I let my small brain let you be the funny funny one, funny one. Here. I'm I'm fucking up today. I feel like I'm dead today. I don't know why. Nah, nah, you're you're on. You're on, man. Let me allow me. To pick you up spiritually and say you're on. Feel it. Pick me let up. it let it come through. I can feel your hands in my armpits. Sorry, I haven't put on deodorant yet. Actually, you know it's something funny I do since I'm a big fat slob. Is what it, are you I have, about, I, have, I have a nice. I have I have about seven of these Old Spice, different yeah. flavors, whichever I'm feeling. And yeah. right now, I think I'm feeling Old Spice Timber. This okay. isn't really. I wouldn't say this is an endorsement. I don't think I'm. I'm not even the biggest fan of Old Spice, but it's just there. You know what I mean? <laughs> At the store, there's no. There's what? What kind of deodorant do you use? Uh, oh, here. I wait, use... hold on. Let me get this ASMR real quick. Yeah, hit it. Oh man, dude, that's like sticking some butter between some elephant ass cheeks, dude. It is. It is. <laughs> That smells good. <laughs> I'm freshed up and ready to go, dude. Do you think your armpits are almost as big as some people's asses? Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> if I didn't have, if I wore a cutoff, it'd literally look like a like a big puffy <laughs> pussy right here, like my armpit fat. If I if I if I if I stood here like this, every guy in the chat would be fucking bricked up. And if we had any if we had any ladies of the night who loved who loved to eat a little clam as well, they would be they would like it. This is a nice puffy area. <laughs> Sometimes when I sit there and I, sometimes whenever I pleasure myself, I, I I take off my shirt and I just put my put my deal like that and I just look in the mirror. Yeah, I was about to say you dip your tongue in. Oh, the I don't, I don't. Like, yeah, <laughs> kiss the tip, sixty nine with yourself. Yeah. Oh my god. Dude. <laughs> I put a wig on my shoulder and I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Ovi sitting sitting on this call, sixty ing your own fucking armpit. <laughs> you know I don't trust with a a, per, a person. You ever see somebody? Just made me think about this because I was doing this. Yeah, you ever see somebody with some dry ass elbows? They have like a skin t- condition on their elbows. What yeah. is that called? Um, dry ass elbows. No, but it's like a medical thing. It grosses me out. Oh, eczema. I got that, baby. Do you have eczema? Yeah, I do. Sometimes people have eczema. I'm just like, what the fuck are we? What, how do you how do you fix that? You, dude, eczema treatments are brutal, man. Well, was this? That's what I thought I heard. Yeah, I, I'm thinking of like some Game of Thrones type shit. Remember that one dude that gets like grayscale or whatever, and they have to like peel off his skin. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. I was wondering if it's like that. Yeah. Nah. I guess maybe he just had an allergic reaction, dude. Having eczema in that period of time, just kill yourself. 
pretty much. Is it itchy? Does it itch? Yeah. I get it on my eyes lately a ton. It's brutal. Really? But yeah, I, I like my eczema is not that bad now. When I was a kid, ooh, buddy. My fucking, the inside of my elbows, dude, I look like dragon scales, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Irritated yeah, yeah. skin with the dragon scales is disgusting. Yeah, it is. <laughs> that isn't to say that anybody that has eczema that's listening to this should be, that I'm, I'm just weirded, I'm grossed out by you. <laughs> <laughs> There really was no delicate, good way to put that. I just kind of, I feel like I just had to put it out there and be as transparent as I can. Because one of these days, one of these days, somebody's going to look at me and they're going to say, Hunter, your life decisions gross me out. And you know what I'm going to say? I agree. That's probably not fair because these are conscious decisions I'm making versus the eczema just kind of shows. Yeah, it it happens to But there has to be a fight in this. There has to be something that I can, you know, put out there as well, you know? How how about this? If you have uncontrollable 10 out of 10 eczema, we empathize. But if you have controllable 4 out of 10 eczema, you're fucking gross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if it's a, if it's a thing <laughs> where it's just like that's a you, you were dealt a if it, you're dealt a hand and it's just cut riddled and shit, right? Yeah. That's your life. I sympathize with that. But if it's just one of these things where it's like, I don't know. Once in a while, it flares up. I'm just like, if you're if it flares up, stay. <laughs> don't home. flare up. <laughs> stay home. Yeah, don't don't flare up. I can't control that. Better better get some ice packs. Stop. Stop it. That's why I say, get back <laughs> inside. I'm just sitting out sitting out on the street by their house with a lawn chair, and I'm just like, Mm-mm. <laughs> no, I think go ahead. And I tap my Old Spice Timber, and I'm just laying into my <laughs> armpits, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, I thought you were going out today. Hunter said my elbows are gross, so I'm gonna stay home. <laughs> no, the scary hairy man on the road said to stay inside. Dude, I okay, wish. Okay, stay inside, now, sweetie. Now I'm wishing Alice had eczema <laughs> just so <like> you could. <laughs> just so I could see you guys fight about it. Hey, guys, we want to just give you a quick break to talk about our sponsor, ZocDoc. There's nothing worse than going to a doctor's appointment expecting to be the center of attention, and then your doctor seems like they have better things to do and better places to be, instead of listening to you intently, asking you how you feel, and helping you along, the doctor is checking the clock. On ZocDoc, you'll find quality doctors who focus on you, listen to you, and prioritize your care. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. When you're not feeling your best and you're trying to hold it together, finding great care shouldn't take up all your energy. That's where ZocDoc comes in. Using their free app and millions of users rely on, you can find the right doctor that meets your needs and fits your schedule. Yeah. Book an appointment with a few taps in their app and start feeling better faster. Go to ZocDoc.com stretch and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash stretch zocdoc.com slash stretch you you seem very uh you seem very off-putted by me and my wife's relationship you no seem very dude concerned. i was i was hysterical man i i told alina afterward i said the way they could just get into it it's so funny and it makes total sense like why you guys are together the way you guys could just go at it is i don't know i was in tears man she's uh She's a giant white head on my back. <laughs> you know what my wife is to me? My wife is a giant like pimple right here on your nose. Yeah. Like right there where it's like yeah. it just is painful. And it's like, it's almost impossible to pop because it's like how do you even approach, you know, how do you even right. get there? Yeah. That's what it's like. That's to me that's what marriage is like in general. Yeah. She used to be a fun skin tag. Mm-hmm. That I would just, you know, play with. It didn't do any harm. It was just there. Right. right. Right? Now it's here. Now it's on the back of my ear. Now it's on my back. I can't reach it. Just, just she's just nipping at me. Bark, she's just barking at you from down yeah. there. 
That's all. That's all it is. Well, maybe if you got in the gym, you'd be smaller. You'd be able to reach me, you motherfucker. <laughs> that's pretty much how it is. <laughs> all right, sweet. Okay, sweetie. <laughs> I want to be that kind of guy, dude. I want to be the guy that's just like, okay, all right, babe, what's up? Like, you know what I mean? She's just like, like are we out of honey? Or whatever the fuck she'd say. Yeah. Are we out of mustard? Yeah. I think it's in the pantry, baby. I want to be that kind of guy. Yeah. And then if it, if it's not there, you get on your moped to go get some. <laughs> With a big old smile. Yeah. Midnight in Paris style. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be right back. <laughs> I'll be right back from the organic groceries, baby. Just hold on. Just... <laughs> <laughs> My fat ass going down the road on a fucking <laughs> moped. <laughs> I don't even have, like, a Harley. Something where they're just like, yeah, he's a big, white, southern man. A Harley makes sense. It's a fucking French moped. <laughs> that fucking... The tires look like they're just screaming. Dude, now I'm like... We were I'm, meant for this kind of weight I'm, I'm, kind of thing. I'm picturing you now, as big as you are, cosplaying as a vegan. Like, all that shit you described <laughs> earlier. Like, the gaunt vegan. You dress the same. But everything looks just, yeah, no one has the fucking insensitivity to be like, yo, Hunt. Maybe Slap this, it to a Slim Jim. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe this lifestyle isn't for you. I don't think that this, I don't think this lifestyle is fitting you well, man. I think all the, <laughs> your entire life is carbs and sugars. That's all, that's all it is. <laughs> You're like, I'm like, oh, well, it's vegan. vegan. There's nothing processed and it's just a chocolate muffin. I don't know. <laughs> well, Oreos are vegan. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. I, I checked the label and I mean, it checks out. There's no animal cruelty here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like nothing but just sugary carbs in my fucking basket <laughs> and soy chorizo. Mm, I'm going to make nacho tonight. <laughs> mm. Oh, that's good. That's really good. Oh, my God, dude. Buying so much candy. So much candy. <laughs> yeah. I love gobstoppers. All you eat is gobstoppers. That's yeah. my entire night. Is I just eat gobstoppers. <laughs> mm, these really are everlasting, aren't they? <laughs> you know, speaking of vegans, Spock is like the first beefy vegan that I met. I bet he fakes it. You think? You think he's just eating T-bones on the side? I bet so. I can see Spock cooking up a nice pork chop, dude. We I should, bet Spock. I bet Spock's favorite meal is a pork chop with applesauce. Yeah. We went out. We went to. We went. We went out to that uh, the Chinese place whenever we were there last yeah. time. The Prince. Mm. And he if was like, ever. Well, hold on. Let's just let the people know if you're ever mm. in Los Angeles. I think that we've given <laughs> multiple shout outs to Prince on on this show. I'm pretty well, sure. Well, we can do it every fucking episode. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure. getting paid. That I, well, at what point I'm going to start becoming bitter? I'm like, you know how many times? Because it's always going to take for me to go in there one time, and then it's like bad service. I'm like, you know what? I, I've uh, <laughs> you know what I've done for this business. You know? Do you know what I've done for this corporation? <laughs> We were sitting there and <laughs> no, hold up, you're doing that. The waiter just looking at you like, <laughs> yeah. Do you you realize Ray Romano just came in here, right? <laughs> I think I think we'll be okay without you. I'm like everybody loves Ray. <laughs> can you imagine Ray Romano in a Chinese restaurant? I can't even imagine that. Hey. Yeah, I'd like. Yeah, I'd like the. Uh, <laughs> I'd like the I'd like the duck soup with the uh, whatever the fuck. Those you guys have. I don't really know what these words mean. <laughs> that's a, that's my Ray Romano impression. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, oh yeah. Spock was sitting there and he was he's he looked like he was ordering. He was like he's looked at something and I was like he was like oh I'll take this I'll I'll take oh wait no never mind it he like was ordering something but he pulled back really quick I yeah like, if no one was here. He would have just gotten the chicken. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, you think you think he would have? Yeah, yeah. It was a perform. It's in. a performance. I think. I think he's. So it's I think all he knows bullshit. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think if it was just him there, you know, he just said he's like, just go and bring it over. You know, <laughs> I mean, what are these really? I mean, are chickens even animals really? Yeah. Right? They're so yeah. overpopulated as yeah. it is. It's that kind you of think, thing. You think that'd be a good sketch? Just a uh, couple guys trying to gaslight their vegan buddy into. Anyway, come on, man. I don't think it'd be a good sketch. I think it'd be a good PSA. Mm, okay. I'd be like, cut, cut this shit out. Ah, there we go. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Because you know what happens with a lot of these guys, these young, hip vegans? You know what happens? They sit there, and it's like, it's all gung-ho. They get, they get, this is what happens. A lot of it is motivated by, I think, pussy. I'll be honest. Yeah. 
They want some of that nice art ho vegan pussy. Who doesn't? Hey, yeah. the hey the the honey from the the fucking the honey from the hive is the <clears throat> sweetest, right? Yeah. So you're sitting there. After a while, though, you're just like, fuck, how long are we going to be on this roller coaster? I'm thinking about done. I think you start seeing somebody, you start seeing about somebody with some cellulite, something like that. All of a sudden, you're like, fuck, I think I need to start beefing up a bit, literally. Yeah. So then all of a sudden, oh, the vegan thing turns into, well, I only eat meat that I kill myself or that is like native to the land. And then the, right. the rules get more and more until by the time Spock's 40, he's going to be he's going to be just like all of us. That motherfucker going to be a Burger King. Yeah, he's going to sit there and he's going to be like, you guys want anything from Popeye's? And it'll be like that. That's how it's going to be introduced, too. You don't eat that stuff. Yeah, I, it's a whole... I, I gave up on that a while ago. It's going to say that. That's going to be the situation you find yourself in. I want to validate this with a real story. I've mm. told a story before, but I always think it's real funny. So I have friends in high school that played in hardcore bands. Yeah. And there was a kid that they knew. He was a singer, I believe. Or maybe he's just a hardcore fan. doesn't matter. He was vegan. A lot of them went vegan. Kid gets vegan X vegan on his neck. Oof. Oof. And he told one of my buddies, my buddies told him, hey, man, we're 17. You don't know what the where the fuck you're going to end up. Don't. No, I do. Nah, bro, don't do it. Don't yeah. do it. Uh, I, don't, I don't care. Six months later, my buddy walks into an in and out Guess Ways who's there. munching a double double? Oh yeah, absolutely. <sighs> yeah, but it's the secret menu. It's the jungle fries or whatever the fuck. No, called. no, dude, he gave up. My buddy walks up to him and was like, "Bro," and he goes, "You're right, man." Oh, which made it kind of funny. I would have loved if he had a napkin. And he was just dabbing his face like <laughs> he did. <laughs> 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 the snow <laughs> thing. Yeah, no. I tell you what I like about it. you know what thing too is all these young fucking punk rockers and stuff. It's, it's it's cool to be punk and hardcore whenever you're young because you're kind of sexy. Yeah. You have that youthful vibe to yourself. Yeah. You ever see a, a punk rocker when they're like even 40? You're just like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like I was listening to that newest. Uh, I had a belt around my throat this morning because I was in my closet. And I, I threw it up over the thing and I was hanging myself because I right. was listening to the newest Blink-182 song because it was just I like. I knew it. I knew it. You just, I mean, it's one of those things where. He's like, uh, what the fuck was the 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 lyric? It was unbelievable. It's like, oh, let me uh, pull them up. They're they're all they're all kind of brutal. I remember reading it the day it came out, and I thought, oh, it was geez. like, uh, I fucked her in church. It was something like that. I'm yes. a punk rock kid. I don't fit in it. Yeah, it was like that. And I literally was like, it's these. You're fifty. You're fifty years old. You're a punk rock kid. You're fifty, <clears throat> and I, I fucked her in church. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. Here we go. That's Ready? why I was like, if you're if you're a hardcore kid, right? You're like, oh fuck alcohol, ruins your life, fuck drugs, mm -hmm. ruins your life. I get that. After a while though, you're gonna understand that, dude, 40, 50 years old, you're gonna want to crack a beer and probably smoke a cigarette. Yep. Like, I mean, that's that's a whole life you've had to live. You've had to bear. Yeah, yeah. I'm a punk rock kid. I came from hell with a curse. She tried to pray it away, so I fucked her in church. This fifty year old wrote that lyric. <laughs> fifty not only fifty year old, but fifty fifty year old millionaires. Fifty year old millionaires with a brand that's probably almost worth a billion dollars wrote that. <laughs> Is that cool? Did you think that's did you think that's rad? I mean, I think it's yeah, I think it's awesome, you know, because uh, at fifty yeah, years old that's punk rock, dude. Yeah. At fifty years old, man, it you know, it's it's never too late to the only thing that I respect is that they're 50 years old and they can, it almost seems like a contest of like, what's the worst thing we could write and see if we can still sell it. Yeah. And they did. They probably, they probably definitely did. We're in a very weird time where when we were younger, a lot of the, like the young music now is like super mega popular. Yep. Like hearing people talk about Paramore and My Chemical Romance is, it's, it's like, a, it's like a religion almost or something. I mean, bro, imagine, imagine <clears throat> that shit for them. Because when they had it, they were critically acclaimed. When they first made that shit, huge. Mm. And to be 50 years old, and it blows up the exact same way with the yeah, exact yeah. same fucking fan base. Be, that'd be a high. That'd be, that would be a, an unbelievable high. Just being like, hey, remember when you played Warp Tour and your body felt good? 
You got to do that shit no again. Shit. Remember when you used to be able to fit into size 26 jeans? <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Remember, Remember that? Remember how you were still kind of fat when you were a teenager, but you're real bad now? Yeah. You want to you want to listen to that and sit outside for three and a half hours for in like a, an outside concert, or whatever, waiting for us to play seven songs? Yeah. I do. Oh my god. Yeah. Bro, it really, it really, uh, it really is a crazy thing to me that they that could that they could write something that still feels relevant to teenagers, however many years later. I mean, it's it's the same thing, right? Every time. I feel like every genre has the exact same the the the, the archetypal trope. You see it in metal, you see it in rock, you see it in hip hop. It's all this the same bullshit. Yeah, right? but it's packaged I, different ways. Yes, but I what I mean is even still the style of writing is like from that period. You know what I mean? So I yeah, would have thought that's true. Even though the even though the feelings and shit are the same, it's like the way it's spoken about is still older relative. Yeah. And the fact you, that do you think that's just because it's like it sounds like a Blink One Eighty Two song? Therefore, it's like imagine somebody else writing this. Imagine a seventeen-year-old writing this, and they had the same kind of guitar. I feel like people would be like, "Fuck you," you know? Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah, that's so. I uh, fucked her in church. You'd be like, yeah. "Fuck off." It yeah. only, it's only acceptable because you have the goggle, the nostalgia goggles on. That's true. And also because they're fifty, and you're just like, yeah. "Well, I mean, they're fifty. What are they going to do? Right? You know." remaster their sound and it's like if they were artistic if there was integrity there maybe but i doubt it i also think what helped it a lot is weirdly like a lot of mainstream rap music moved into like like pop punk ish vibe. oh yeah well all of all of the uh yeah pop punk all of the fucking new age soundcloud stuff were so heavily inspired by like especially like scene music it seems like mm-hmm. my chemical romance but even like I see like trickles of like uh, escape the fate and like weird hot topic aesthetic and like that kind of shit. Like, yeah, that was super inspired there. Some 41, all that kind of stuff. Yep. I mean, fucking that must be dude. Shout out to all the fucking uh, pop punk guys that are, you know, pissed all their money away on like cocaine and drugs and, you know, got caught up fucking some teenager. And then, yeah, you know. (laughs) <laughs> Maybe not God bless that part, but <laughs> now bless him. God, God, God bless gives the toughest battles man. to his strongest angels. <laughs> yeah, there you go, bro. <laughs> uh, the Lord knew when he made some 41 popular. Listen to me, folks. When he when the Lord made these men, he knew, he knew <laughs> deep down. That teen, that tweeny bopper pussy was going to be so tempting. He knew. <laughs> They're going to be jumping around. They're going to be screaming his name from there. And he like, put oh. them in front of those girls. Just oh, to prove. Damn, the, tempta- the, the, the taste of that temptation fruit's the sweetest. It's the sweetest of all of them. It's I would just know. sweet. I would know. The little boys I see here in church. Oh, my Lord. Oh looking my lord! Look, looking at the back row, <laughs> like you back there. What's your name, son? Come to the front. The Power Ranger shirt. Come on up here. Come on up. Here. <laughs> What's your name, Michael? Mm. <laughs> now see, now start- see, now see the Lord. He he knows. He knows. He knows just how much I want to wrap my giant hands. Giant rings on every finger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start naming you Strawberry. What? Mm, God damn! Look at that him. Yeah. <laughs> the Lord, uh. the Lord put you here in my patch. You see, all around you is just is just weeds and disgusting dirt and filth. But in the middle of all this patch, he put you here. It's a little strawberry. A little strawberry, because he knew, he knew, he knew how That's much. That's right, Pastor. <laughs> He knew Bless how him. much you would tempt me. He knew. And I'm going <laughs> to oh, show temptation, him. temptation, Pastor. I'm going to show him. I will not give in. I will not give in. I could kiss you on the lips right now. I could kiss you on the lips right now. <laughs> I want to kiss you finger. on the lips right now. <laughs> keeps, keeps hitting his lips. I could kiss you on the lips right now. I want to kiss you on the lips right now. But <laughs> nope, I'm not going to. I don't think I'm going to. I don't think I'm gonna do it. He puts oh, his finger wait, hold on, around. Pastor. He puts his finger on his lips and kisses his finger. Yeah, I could. 
It's the little fairy. This reminds me. Did you, did you see that fucking clip of the Dalai Lama getting yeah, his dude. son? Yeah, dude. Holy just shit. About to say, he bro. fucking kisses that kid. Thank God. First off, thank God they blurred his face. Holy shit. Can you imagine being that kid and having that on you forever? Nah, give man. Me a, nah. Give me a kiss. He's like, ah. He's <laughs> like, ah, suck my tongue. I saw what? it. And all the other people are like, <laughs> Dalai Lama. <laughs> <laughs> suck, his, suck his tongue. <laughs> Bro, suck his tongue. <laughs> oh, fuck, dude. Unbelievable. <laughs> I read some Reddit comment that was like, oh, it's a it's a standard greeting that's not sexualized. I'm like, you should suck tongue. You shouldn't have told the world that, man. You're going to get some real freaks going to yeah. Tibet. What? Well, what? Uh, that's like it. That's real normal in my family. <laughs> yeah, you have my uncle, on my dad, my mom. <laughs> I, I'm I'm from I'm from Missouri and and we do the same thing. Even if it was, that's like a tradition. That's how, like you feel like they would pull them aside. Like let's say the cameras aren't. This is like let's say this is thirty years ago. Yeah, nineties or whatever. Yeah. Right. Dalai Lama sitting there gets his little kiss and he's like hey. puts out his tongue. <laughs> the kid gets out. He's like you know second on doing whatever. And they're like, we we should probably chill out with the the tongue sucking thing. That's just that's not translating well. He's like, well, it's old tradition. We've been doing this forever. It's like, yeah, I feel like we've we've moved on. We've yeah. moved on. How about a handshake? Well, can I at least still keep kissing him? <laughs> can I at least get some kisses? And they're like, all right, fine, you can get some kisses. I mean, you know, whatever. <laughs> on the lips, not on the cheek. <laughs> all right, Dalai Lama, let's just let's ease up. First can you imagine all, that though? No, the, the suck, suck my tongue. <laughs> the kids like. <laughs> Here's the thing, bro. You keep closing your eyes, bro. He was like, now suck tongue, eyes open. That like, is true. With like the shades, he was, yeah, just that's that made it feel even more sinister to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was a good kiss. Oh my God! You kiss so much more maturely than what you look like. Here, go ahead and suck this tongue, would you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sucking tongue is a crazy. If that's a greeting in Tibet, that's crazy, man. You're gonna get some real freaks. I'm moving to Tibet on their way, dude. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm moving there right now. <laughs> just fucking. I'm at a gas station. The gas guy comes out. He's just like, "Do you want me to fill it up for you?" Yeah. Whatever. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't hey. know. Hey, brother, appreciate you on the free gallon. Come over here, suck my tongue. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? He puts out his hand to shake, and I'm like, mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> now I want you to suck my tongue. Uh, I, <laughs> what's funny, though, is that uh, there was an apology issued immediately. Yeah. Apparently, he he said, sorry if they, you know, <laughs> I think it's, it's something I'm paraphrasing, but I'm pretty sure it was like, the Dalai Lama did apologize and apologized yeah, yeah. to the apologized to the young uh, young man and said that uh, you know if there was any Blame. kind of confusion. Sorry about that. It's like what kind of confusion? That was pretty trained. That was black and white. If I've ever seen it, Dude, suck my tongue. That kid, uh, you know, uh, God bless him for resisting. I, he did it. No, he didn't suck the tongue. Yeah, he did. No, no, no. Look it up. I don't think he sucks the tongue. I think he absolutely did. He sat there and he was like, he sat there because the guy, that's what I thought it was fucking crazy. He sticks, you see the Dalai Lama stick his tongue out and the kid's face is blurred. Thank God. And then in the background, you see people like smiling and then his face goes up to his tongue and he actually fucking sucks his tongue. I'm pretty sure. Well, bro, I saw, I saw this unblurred. Brutal. Oh, poor kid. Oh, he does. I'm so wrong. I told you. He fucking does. I'm so wrong. Oh, fuck. Fuck, bro. I thought he was recoiling like, uh, I think uh, he, maybe he doesn't suck. It looks like he maybe just kissed his tongue, but still. Also, he sat there and then the Dalai Lama was sitting there and he's like, oh, oh my God, that's crazy. You did it. But hey, and hey, he grabs just, his hand. He like puts it to his hand. He's just like, your hands are cold. Just as a universal thing. We gotta warm thing, these hands up. As a universal thing, dude. I don't know. Even this if it's your own kid. Brutal. Even your own kid. The mouth kiss. I don't know, man. I think it's weird. This is going to be kind of a controversial thing to say. I think it's more fucked up if it's your own kid. Like, I would rather hear that my that my dad asked somebody to kiss his tongue versus 
you find out that it's a normal tradition thing to have his sure. kids kiss his tongue. Yeah. yeah. Either way, it's not good. I'm not saying that it's like it's passive. I'm just saying like that would f- <laughs> imagine going to your friend's house and be like, Good night, Dad. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> Dude, it's not- <laughs> Good night, sweetheart. <laughs> Rough, bro. That's Rough. the Tootsie Pop family. <laughs> <laughs> are those the Tootsie Pops? Yep, those are the Tootsie Pops. <laughs> it really does take three licks, doesn't it, Dad? <laughs> yes, it does, son. <laughs> son, tell him how many licks does it take to get the center of this tongue? Three. Three. Yeah, one, two, three. 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 Bro. Not, but you know, imagine that world, man. Imagine you and I could just greet each other. Mm. You sit, you know, you catch me in the middle of my tour. You're like, buddy, good to see you, dude. That set was incredible. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, mm-hmm. mm. exactly. Thanks, brother. God damn, that was good. Anyways, did you 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 feel like wings or what are you thinking? Like wiping your shit up, <laughs> bro. You know when people do the the cheek kiss in other cultures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just. You and your and your buddy just swap wives for ten seconds there at the doorway on Thanksgiving. For ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, how's it going? Just like both just part ways for a bit. The uh, you you know what I wish though, and I wish it was common in, in society. I it, wish we could just switch wives. Why can't why why can't we all just fuck each other's wives? <laughs> why isn't that normal? The uh, is Sopranos back hugs. Where they fucking, I mean, they, they lay into each other. Yeah. Me and my buddy started doing that for a bit. It was hilarious. But after a while, I like literally think I like <laughs> collapse my lung. He's bringing it. It's like, it's good to see you. And you do that the fucking bam, 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 bam. Bah, bah, bah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Real heavy. Yeah. But then also, why the fuck can't we start doing some cheat kisses, dude? I always like the cheat kiss. You wow. know why? Because th- you know why? You don't actually kiss their cheek. You put your cheek on the side. You do. Yeah. Like that. You're not actually kissing their cheek. You put your cheek. That deal. Big handshake. Like, I want to be like, oh, Madonna. And like, shake your hand. And I'm like, those are fucking uh, Noella. Ah, oh, big yeah. soprano deal. I'd love that. I would start wearing fleece button ups and I'd wear gold chains and gold watches. Yeah. And I'd purposely thin out my hair on top. So you so you just want to be Italian. I want to just be James Gandolfini, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I simply want to be James Gandolfini. I don't know why it's so hard for me to be him. I think you could, I think you could pull it off, dude. <clears throat> if I was just a little taller. And then my, if I was just, if I could just get my, cause he's sexy fat. Yeah. That's one thing about James Gandolfini. It, it helps that he presents himself in a very, in a nice way where I think girls like, oh, he's fine. Right. Yeah. And I think it's just because he drag, he dresses like shit, but it's classy shit. Yeah. It's like old, uh, it's like old Versace type yep. shit. Yep. That kind of vibe. Right. Yep. Got to dress like that. <clears throat> and he has like the nice, he just looks like a man you want to do business with. Shake yeah. his hand. That's what I need, dude. I need you, wanna, you know you what? Look I, like I need, a man I need that to get people want to do stylist. business with. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'm not saying it's not good business, but I think it's like that's the allure that he brings you in that Tony Soprano brings you in with. Yeah, is that you're sitting there, and you're like, fuck this guy. You're intimidated by him, but at the same time, you're just like, I bet you he knows how to make money. We get that you guy. a stylist. Come on, man. I want to get a sty- I want to get a stylist, but I don't want to be. In- I'm. T- I don't like any of the the trends. I wouldn't look good. Like if I dressed how you dressed, it wouldn't look good. No, no, big, no. Big guys who dress like you dress, it's fucking obnoxious. And it's all the fatties in LA, they dress like that. It's fucking <laughs> stupid. They're sitting there, they're all wearing like sneakers and shit. Fat guys wearing sneakers. It's like, fuck Hey, off, but hey, dude. you had some slick sneakers the last time we hanged. I tried to, I tried to get some sneakers, but I look fucking, I look like a clown. Nah. So I, nah. I cut it out already, I threw them away. You're out of here. No, I threw them away. Dude, I, did, those shoes I, were... I donated them. I gave them to the Goodwill. Those shoes were, they look good on you, man. I'm, I'm sad. They didn't. I looked like a fucking clown. I need to start getting loafers. I need to start getting loafers and big fucking Tony Soprano pants. Yeah, that's what I want. I want. I want. I want to get a stylist and just be like, I just make James Gandolfini. The only big guy to ever dress that dresses the best is Matty Matheson. He has the okay. best big man style I've ever seen. Let me, let me look him up. Matty Matheson has the best. I always think he looks. He looks sharp all the time. I don't even think I could pull off his looks, but I think that if I. If I dress like Tony Soprano a lot, I do think I could pull it off. I think I'd have to change my hair, though. Oh, I think you could dress like this. Maddie Matheson, I think you could easily dress like this. 
The thing though too is you know what sucks with this kind of shit is I've, <clears throat> I've tried the, I, I've done the pathetic thing where I sit there and I'm like, oh these these are nice shorts, right? <laughs> and then I sit there and I think to my I, and I just type in nice shorts into Google. Yeah. And it's like Gap. And I'm like, yeah, You're probably not shopping at Gap. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I don't I don't know the name of any clo like like good looking clothing lines and stuff. Yeah, like I could I'd look good with this. Big fucking belly with a wife beater on, like fucking nice little dickies. No, nah, dude. Up, whatever. You know what, bro? You uh, you just gotta shop vintage. It's hard, dude. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard to get big guy sizes of vintage. There's tons of vintage stores out, right? Yeah. But like there's some places like literally vintage, like in Austin, of all places, fucking yeah. Texas. Big fat fatties in Texas. <laughs> Which also I want to say, there's a hilarious I was watching uh Shaq and Charles Barkley and on their inside the NBA show. Yeah. And Charles Barkley's like ongoing bit that he did where it's like women from San Antonio. Have oh, you heard bro. that? <laughs> yeah, That's yeah, so yeah. funny. Oh my god. <laughs> he dude, said that he's like to San Antonio. <laughs> Yeah, it's so I had so, so many funny. people sending me that clip because it had oh, just, like, gone so viral good. again. I got two words for him. I'm full. <laughs> Man, San Antonio women need to learn two words. I'm full. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, it's so good. But the whole thing with an Austin, though, is, like, they they will limit the size of the vintage clothing to, like, large. That's the largest they have is large. Yeah. And they won't take in any other stuff. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. Well, maybe we just, you know, we got to get you, you know, we, you don't need a stylist. You need like an exclusive vintage dealer plug. You need like a, how the fuck do you do that? Do you have a vintage dealer plug? No, no, no. There's, I mean, I get hit up for it anytime I go to a new city. Cause basically vintage dealers, they're actually kind of in terms of like caricatures. I think they're <clears throat> interesting people. What I found, well, I, I, well I, it's interesting you say that, not to cut you off, because the only thing I've done in that, the research I've done, is people that do vintage metal shirts, because mm. I thought that's always tight. Yeah. They have like tour shirts from like eighties, seventies, nine, like crazy <clears throat> shit. But even that stuff too, that's hard to come by because everybody was skinnier back then. Yeah. So, but yeah, well, so I'll say, uh, I like I talk to anytime I've like gone to like a vintage booth at like a swap like a. Oh, not a swap meet, a uh, swap meet, I guess. Um, they'll they'll always say like, "Oh, I'm from here, but I'm just stopping into town." So I found yeah, yeah, that yeah. like you know they're kind of like roadies because they like drive around to different. Well, they do like the it's like the circuit. Yeah, right? flea markets and shit. Flea yep. flea market circuit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I feel like we just need to f get connected with one of those guys. It's like the guy yeah, in the big the big boy X, guy, the big boy vintage guy. Yeah, triple quad, quad quad X. That's that's. Hey man, you know that that's so that's why it's like oh quad X vintage please. Can I? You have quad X, and they're like, yeah, I think I got some old Tasmanian Devil Scarface shirts for you. You need. That's to wear, about it. You no, know, old big dog clothing and Fubu. I am not. My ass is. I am not going to be walking around in a fucking stupid ass big dog. <laughs> We need to put you in fucking FUBU and I, Fat Albert I, I, wear from the early two thousands. I fucking when South I was a kid, Pole. I fucking hate I, every fat person in my family wore big dog, and I was like, "This is the fucking <laughs> so stupid <laughs> shit I've ever seen in my life." Nah, it's like man. Big dog is like a full like anamorphic. It's like furries. It's like redneck furries. It's so weird. It's like a guy. He's like sitting there. He's like a leather jacket on with like sunglasses, and it's like, it's "What the, the fuck are you looking at?" It's just a dog in <laughs> jeans on every shirt. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I can't do it. I can't. I I, I refuse, big dog, dude. Nah, I would man. I would own one. I would own we one. Ironically, and, in, and, and and the bad thing too right now is that there'd be some Gen Z fucking person that would walk up and be like, "Yo, that shirt goes hard." <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm like, you don't even fucking know. You don't even you don't even know the context of this brand, dude. Dude, that's your paramour, man. Is big dog. <sighs> I, but I don't like Big Dog. I don't want Big Dog. Okay, then FUBU. Old FUBU. I don't even know what the fuck FUBU is. You're saying FUBU. What? Like I know what's... FUBU. Is it just F-U-B-U? Yeah, man. FUBU. Official FUBU. Yeah, dude. For us, by us. I mean, I don't know I don't know if you have like racial permission so, to wear old so... FUBU, but... <laughs> am, I, am I too pale to wear FUBU? I mean, you just, you know, you just might need a cosign. Well, who's, who's first off, who's <laughs> us? <laughs> the, who, who is the you in FUBU? Because I'll tell you, it's, I, I don't see a lot of my kind of us on this website. 
<laughs> hey man, I think they have applications. You can find hey, out application. Hi, I'm Hunter. I, I'm a white guy from Kansas City. Am I uh, us? <laughs> can I be a part of us, please? May I get a part of us? I, I mean, uh, what was it to say? No, look, spiritually, okay. When I was growing up, I knew a lot of big dudes uh, that, you know, they wore FUBU and like Fat Albert because, um, in terms of like fit and size. Well, that's why that's the whole thing within in the my deal back in the day. It was either you were a trashy guy who was an accountant for the government, you wore big dog, yeah, or you were a like a, a more you were wor- like blue collar guy. You wore Carhartt, and now Carhartt's cool. Yeah, Carhartt, Carhartt's hip, and Carhartt. I'll, I'll go to my 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 dying grave saying my my grave saying this is. Carhartt, probably the most comfortable shirts I've ever worn. I love hey, Carhartt man. shirts. Where the fuck do you get this like weird hip Carhartt <clears throat> stuff? Is this it's, your dealer? It's my dealer. No, no, no. Carhartt work in progress. Carhartt whip. That's their. Is that like, what that's called? Yeah, it's like their trendy brand. Oh, dude, you should be shopping Carhartt whip. I didn't know that Carhartt had a whip. Yeah. Carhartt whip, huh? Yeah. But I just, I, you know... Uh, Let's browse it right now. Let's see what kind of sexy shit we could get you in, bro. I was going to actually send you... I saw this this guy on on Instagram. Yeah. He he makes fucking amazing sneakers, but it's like custom stuff. I think he takes old materials and like combines them and stuff. I was going to send you his profile. It was actually really, really sweet. I hate this already. No, no. I, uh-huh. I hate mo- I just I hate models. Like, like what the fuck? Like, the, are you on their wet main page? First yeah. off... What the fuck does he look so pouty? It looks like he's doing this. <laughs> right? And you scroll down, and then there's fucking Dracula to your, to your right in the men's jacket deal. Little gaunt ass face. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, come on. The fucking Navajo bracelet with the studded bracelet next to his and the fucking... Listen, come on now. listen, they might be sexy, all right? These, these, do, these do look comfortable, though, I will say. Listen, don't let the sexy people deter you from living your life, man. Ah, but see, this is the kicker, Noel. See, oh, come on. The biggest size they got is double XL. Let's see. But, really? But no, no, no. Their their shit runs large. Like, I, I have to rock a small, and it's still pretty fucking, you know. I got some room in there, dude. I Carhartt, get... Carhartt really let me down with this, dude. What I like no. about Carhartt, it's just like, yeah, we go up to 7XL because we know people are... Waking up early, and they're going to go weld for seven hours. Okay, let's go to the regular Carhartt website, and let's see what their largest sizes are. I don't know, man. You might fit a double X on whip. You just might. This is the worst podcast material, too. Watching like people who are audio listening to this are listening to us. Now, see, look now look at these people on the regular. Now, this is my kind of people on the regular one. You don't ever see their face because Carhartt's like, eh, they, they don't have the best faces, so it's just chins. They don't show anyone's full all face. Right, it's all just right. chins. Hey, man, regular Carhartt does 5XL. I'm I told here. you. <laughs> I told you. Fuck, fuck Carhartt whip. I'm not, I don't want him to support it now. Fat, fat, fat phobic pieces of shit. You have, you already have. It's like we go up to five, but we're. Just, I mean, come on, the fatties aren't going to want this <laughs> stuff. Fuck that. Yo, you know what I love in the what? original sweat fighting tee? That dude got a gut, man. That That's what I'm guy. saying. All right, but th- see now, this is where I'm like, eh, all right, I feel com- I feel comfortable <laughs> perusing the Carhartt website. I'm like, look at this. I, I can't see anybody's face, and if they do have a face, it's a, like they're in the middle of doing some kind of work. I'm telling you, hey, no. they don't see versus Carhartt Whip. You almost see the all of their. You see almost see their whole fucking body because they're like, look how beautiful, look how beautiful these people are. Oh no, that's god. that's all it is. Look how sexy they are. That's yeah, all they're my trying god. to say. You could be sexy just like them because you yeah. also weigh seventy pounds. Yeah, man. Nah, you know what, bro? It's no, y- up, you can get all the same shit at Carhartt. There's just no graphic prints. Well, th- some of the materials look different with Carhartt Whip. Like I looked at the. Uh, well, this awake thing, awake New York, that looks fucking terrible. But like they're uh, they're awake, they're awake like button up shirt. That looks like nice material. Like I'd like to wear that, but up oh, the only size they have is large. That's fun. Damn Look at that, dude. Damn. Fuck this stupid ass fucking deal, dude. I feel discriminated against. Now, I feel like a victim. Well, you know what, man? What's up? Since we're talking about size and shit, when you mm-hmm. told me you've squatted five hundred pounds. I looked at you and I said, "Damn, that's a man right under there." Under this, under this fat, there is I, I, I'm. It's like uh, it's every man 
in like the Midwest has some kind of like old Midwest strength. That's like the whole yeah. thing back then is like, you probably have it with your dad too. It's like old man strength, whatever. I feel like that's deep seated in you, but Bro, I, there, there, there is muscle under here. I just let my, let myself go too far. Listen, dude. I, I love my dad. He's, he's a great guy. I'm going to say he doesn't have old man strength. My dad is, my dad's like six inches shorter than I am. Yeah. But I've seen him, like the things I've seen him do, I'm like, you're a freak. You're a Mid- freak of nature. Midwest is built different, man. You guys are, you're fed different. You're, you just, you're born doing, just, is, you're just different. I, I think Midwest, Midwest strong, it's a, it's a category of its own. I would, you know, and I, and I've have been, I have been doing better with my, with the, 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 the eating and stuff. Cause that's the biggest problem. Let's go. I, I, get, I get, I get stressed. It's stress eating, you know, your chemicals in your brain. It's just like, oh, I'm stressed. I, I'm hungry now. Blah, blah, yeah. blah. I mean, yeah. I've been doing better with that and stuff, but I also think whenever I'm moving soon and whenever I'm out in the middle of nowhere, I'm not going to be able to, to, to door dash and shit. I'm going to be out in the, the, the thicket as it were. That's going to be. Yeah. So even that's, that's going to be better. I think like, and the thing too is I know that if I actually went two months, if I, I bet you I could lose forty pounds in two, like easy, easy with the size I'm at right now. If I, I, I could probably even, I would even dare to say fifty, because a lot of this is like, you, I would plateau after a while, but like a big chunk of it would come off really easy. It's just finding that fucking groove, dude. I'm the emperor right now. I'm trying to find that new, new groove. That's why I was trying to figure out what what could get you in a vibe, you know. I, hey man, you claim to be such a fucking, uh, you know, a sharpshooter on the court. Just buy yeah, fucking. But the, the, the thing, it's a, it's a mental thing with me. The whole thing is like, if I feel like, because you can't trick your brain. Like, of course, it's like, well, you know, I'm doing this deal because I'm trying to just lose a couple. Of pounds. I would rather just be in a mode where I'm like, I'm doing it efficiently. It's not like a fun game. I just need to crack down and be and stop being such a fucking bitch and like, actually. Get like a routine going and stick with it, and don't just be like, huh, "Okay, it's kind of hard to wake up today, so I, I'm I'm just gonna take today off because I'm tired." I need to fuck off with all that. Yeah, and I need to just like stick to a regiment because my brain my brain is in a way where, like, once I latch onto something and it becomes a new routine, I I will stick with it, and like I become obsessed with it, it becomes a part of my routine, kind of thing. But it's just like getting that shit started is difficult maybe because like place, right now i'm already in my routine well, maybe not maybe the routine. new place will will inspire you to like all right maybe just like i'll start over i was saying some shit that you're willing to just like bang out so rather than it being like a workout you're like hey, you know fuck it i'll go i'll go on the court for 30 you know just yeah but see i'd rather just be like oh, i'm gonna do cardio lifting for 30 and just listen to music and you know what i mean okay because even that i i you know what? i i'll never be even if i was in shape i don't understand the whole the, you know what pisses me off it's people that like say they go to the gym, but it's like it's like especially in the Midwest. Oh my god. Buff people in the Midwest are like attractive, like <laughs> attractive people. But people that live in the Midwest that go to the gym and shit have the most buttery face. Like they're like these fucking like they're like these in shape ghouls walking around. And they just stay at the fucking gym for three and a half hours. Like just just pit patting around. I'm like, do you not have anything else going on in your day? <laughs> no. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yes. They don't. None of them do. They have no hobby. That's why I was like, I don't want to get too in shape because I'll lose all my hobbies. Yeah, yeah. Anybody, no, 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 who, no. anybody who is super, super in shape and that's like their whole personality, no hobbies. Nah. No personality. That's that, that's why when you were like, ah, oh, you're going to lose your funny, I told you no because I am I limit it. I actually don't. I only work out like three to four times a week and I don't. That's yeah. all you probably need though. So you're you're already like there though. I think you just... You're just trying to get a little bit of strength. You're trying to be healthy. Yeah, you know what I mean? Just, you're you're yeah, just trying just, to... It's just like... It's a breath of fresh air. Yeah. You know? that, that's that's all. your whole thing. That's all. That's why... But I hold... I need to be restructured. But you know what's going to piss me off, though? Is that once I lose the the plump of my face, hmm. I'm going to become one of those Midwest ghouls. Nah. I don't like that. Nah, come on, man. We've People seen like, you oh, young. Oh, God. He looks... He, I sh- he should have just stayed fat. He's much more fuller when he's fat. Nah, we've that's seen gonna, you that's young, the comments dude. I'm going to see. You were a handsome... You were a handsome boy. I was a younger man then. This is this is three this is three episodes of me of, of three episodes in a row of me just straight flirting with you. So I don't want to hear it anymore. I'm gonna uh, I am gonna take it seriously. I am gonna I I it, it, there will be a progression over time. But I will say after a while, one thing I was gonna do is I'm either gonna start wearing a mask, or I'm gonna, <laughs> and, and I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep, like as I lose weight, I'm gonna keep a I'm gonna keep a, like a weight around my stomach. Or like a thing to have the illusion that I still have my belly and videos and stuff like that. 
because I want to have a, a deal where well, one day I'm just like, oh, and by the way, and I take it off and I drop the thing, take off my mask, whatever, and it's just like, I've been transformed. And it's just like a, whoa, look yeah. at him now. Yeah. I think that'd be funny. I think it'd be awesome. Yeah, dude, do the greatest prank on us and get sexy. <laughs> you guys just got pranked so hard. <laughs> yeah, but then see, now that I'd feel, I'd feel bad, though, because people would be like, oh, th- you look so great. And I'd be like, okay. <laughs> and I'd go and I'd go over. I'd go over and I'd go to Zaxby's and I get a number three. Yeah, I better get two cokes at that. Thanks, sweetie. Yeah, no. Nah, nah. Can you imagine saying that in the drive-through nowadays? You get fucking. Do you think that the fast food no. workers would probably tell you to fuck off? No. In the Midwest, I think people still do that. Also, something else I want to say about Midwest gyms. They say darling a lot still. In the Midwest gyms, you can always count. There's going to be a motherfucker in there working out in jeans and gloves. Absolutely. Always. We call those. Because that's that's the uh, autistic military kids. Yeah, that's like a seventeen-year-old, seventeen-year-old who is, he, yeah, 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 seventeen-year-old <laughs> who's getting ready to go into the National Guard or the Army. Those are the guys that show up with weightlifting gloves, but then they have Wrangler jeans, yep, and a fucking like Harley Davidson shirt that or, their dad got them or, or their dad died in or something like that, and they wear it now. Or a tucked-in white T-shirt. What the fuck is that called? Whenever you go to like. Why am I? Why the? Why am I missing it? It's where it's like school credit, but they go there to learn like to be an electrician or like general. What the fuck is that called? Oh, like uh, I, I think at my school we used to call that like ORP or something. It's it's one of those acronym kind of whatever the yeah. fuck it is. It, th- those are those kind of kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, yeah. well, I, I I saw an adult version of one of those. Bald guy, really? glasses, jeans. The fucking, you know, the Street Fighter gloves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The double Definitely. dragon gloves. That feels borderline illegal, too. Because <laughs> every gym in every town has just, like, fucking, like, athletic 15-year-olds in there. Yeah. They don't give a good goddamn. Yeah. And you're just like, this is unpleasant. Well, What are we, what are we doing? Actually, what is, not. What the hell is this? I always laugh when I see athletic 15-year-olds, and my thought is always, I just got to learn how to shoot a gun, because these motherfuckers, they're just in there benching 380, like, yo, dude, it's lit. Hell yeah. Yeah, well, see, they, they don't, every one of the people that have been able to do that, like varsity, like football people. Yeah, yeah. Now, whatever. I look at them now, and it's like, they definitely are probably still strong, but it's just like everywhere else is just, they just let it all go, dude. <laughs> and also, they're all bald. I don't know why, too. I think that's just like a, pro, a byproduct of like testosterone weightlifting bro. when you're on. It's probably what it is. They're all patchy ass head, and yeah. all of them are so fucking stupid that they can't, they're just like, dude, just shave it off. Looks like the fucking Crypt Keeper. You know when you see like an old woman who's like 87 and you like can see the scalp of her head, but she still keeps all of her hair up because she's just like, I'm a lady. <laughs> it's like that's what 33 year old varsity football players look like from high school that never did anything. Yeah. Also, dude, the the deep cutoffs where it's like you see oh. the pack, you see the guy's nipple and bro, stuff. And they're bro. like they, they like put it together like this. They put it together like this, and they're like <sighs> Yeah, the fucking triple O neck. <laughs> yeah, God. dude. That shit's so fucking... And they like, walk around with like, a jug of water. It's like, fuck off, dude. I, d- d- ugh. That trend makes you got to wee. Well, yo, I think we got to we gotta wrap it because we got to do the ads. Oh, shit. Yep. Well, everybody, thanks for tuning in for another super hot, super uh, sexy episode of the one and only. <laughs> All right, everybody, we'll see you next time. Thank you.